Let's take a look at the user setup in Salesforce Classic. So if you've just opened up your, your Salesforce Classic, you're wondering, how can I begin to customize this to reflect the users that I have, right? So what you're going to do is actually go right up here to Setup. And on the left-hand side, we're going to talk, take a look at Manage Users. So I'm going to begin by walking you through each one of these pieces. In this instance, when we talk about a user, this is someone who is using Salesforce, right? You will hear the terms account, contact, leads. These are things that will be created, um, inputted into Salesforce. Right now, I'm talking about myself as the user of Salesforce. This is just an important distinction, okay? So I'm going to click users, and what you can see is the users in Salesforce, right? You can see that I am the administrator. Um, and that we have different users. We can also add users here and what we can do is specify their roles where they are in the organization. We can, um, once we put in their email address, that will become their username. That's really, really important. So as you're setting up users, uh, ensure that they are using an email that um, in, in many cases is not their personal email. All right, you can figure out which data.com user type they are. And as you go through this user setup, you can begin to think about the time zone that you are operating in, the language that you are operating in. Um, and in some cases, you may have a manager that's delegated to this person. You would have to input this user so that you can delegate this person as a manager, right? Um, and you can make sure that there is an approver. Once you click Save, very important, the person will receive an email from Convio Common Ground and that will ask them to set up or verify their account. Once they click um, on that and they set up their account, Salesforce will then put this user into the system and based on the permissions, and I'll talk about those in a moment, and the roles that they have, they will be put in a specific hierarchy. Now, let me give you just a very short snapshot. The CFO, the Chief Financial Officer, has a very high role in the hierarchy, okay? Which means in Salesforce, they're able to see more data than the, someone at the bottom of the hierarchy, okay? And what that means is that the CFO is able to access certain pieces of information their permission sets, their roles, allow them to see more based on what you put right here in the, uh, in the system, okay? And these can be changed over time, but whatever you tick in these boxes um, can, in some instances, provide access to certain things. So, as you begin to fill this out, remember that it has implications for what the user will be able to see and do in Salesforce. Okay, so we've set up our users. Um, we are now going to look at some of the adoption manager. Let's take a look at this. This is where you would, and once again, for those of our students who are not in the US, the UK, or Australia, this would not apply. But what you'd be able to do is actually enable a Salesforce manager. Um, and this, you can see some frequently asked questions. I'm not going to dwell too much on this because we have quite an international audience here in our, cl in our class right now. You can also mass email uh, specific people from this user. So, um, in this case, you can look at active users. You can create a new view. So, if we had multiple users in your organization, you could um, create a view that shows, for example, only salespeople or only managers, and you could actually mass email them using this function. I spoke a little bit earlier about roles and permission sets, and this is a great graphic to show you exactly what I was talking about. So as you're looking down the hierarchy of the organization, you can see that certain people can access and do things based on their roles, right? So view and edit data, roll up forecasts, and as you go up, you can begin to see where people are and what they're able to do, all right? And we can do that for a project, 
a territory and a company size sample, right? And in each case, you'd be able to see some of these pieces. You can also click set up roles and that will change some of the permission sets and roles that certain people are able to access. Talking about permission sets, you can go in and actually shift and change the permission sets. In this case, because I'm using a developer version of Salesforce, um, this isn't robust, but you're able to actually go in and um, change the permission sets based on people's roles. So the three key terms are roles, permission sets, and profiles. A profile is exactly what we looked like in the previous lecture where we looked at my personal profile, for example. In this case, you're able to actually view the profile of a particular record. Okay, So in this case, we can, as we go through, we can even edit a certain profile and begin to think about whether that profile is visible or not. Okay, So as you're thinking about the profile, you may want to change whether it is on that particular profile on the contact record, for example, you might want to be able to see certain tabs and not see others, right? So it might be really cluttered. You might want to clear it out. So in this case, we're looking at the marketing profile, which is a custom profile. We might want to take off chatter, right? So we can take that out. We might want to put leads in, right? That makes sense reports make sense and as we go down we could actually select certain options that would help us um, to clear this up or view certain things and not view others right I'm just sort of walking you through this process you as the administrator will use your discretion um, and your context to take in certain things and pull out others okay so what I'm going to do is I wanted to bring you down here. Wonderful. So this is where you're able to select the permissions for the specific profile. Okay. So in this case, a someone with this particular profile, right, a marketing profile, can read, create, edit, and delete any account records in the system. However, they can only read contracts and documents. They cannot create, edit, or delete them, right? Cred. In other cases, they can't see any ideas, they can't access any um, orders, and they can only read price books and products. However, if you wanted them to be able to create, edit, or delete, you could simply check one of these boxes, and that would allow them to have access to do that. A button would appear that says create, edit, uh, or delete, right? So you can also um, integrate with your clients. You can figure out when you would like the passwords to expire, the length. You could pretty much determine what kind of password uh, should be the parameters of a password, the security levels, right? You could say a lockout period, how long that would be, the maximum login attempts. And you could indicate whether they have a question when they log into Salesforce. This is all part of the security of your system. I'm going to hop into public groups. I don't have any, but these are groups in which uh, your organization can collect around certain issues, um, certain products, certain projects, and those sort of things. You can have queues. Queues relate to specific um, as I would say workflows in some instances. So a queue could be related to a specific case. It could be related to a specific um, sales process. There are very many ways in which queues are used. In this case, um, it could also be related to an email um, process that's being uh, outlined. You could look at someone's login history. So we can see, for example, uh, when people logged in how long they were on the system for, right? Um, and we can also use identity verification, right? So we can look at that information there, when they logged in, whether they were successful or not, and the messages and emails that have been sent um, in relation to that and from where they were sent. 
So I've walked through the user interface as an administrator in quite a bit of detail. I've tried to give you the main points. There is a lot of information. I would have to shoot an hour worth of video to go through the details of each, but I hope this gives you a 